Here's another example of integrating using trig substitution. And again, the reason we recognize that is that we have x squared plus 9 inside the square root. And that x squared plus 9 can be simplified with the right Pythagorean identity if we select x equals the right trig function. So again, you want to think about should x equal sine of theta or secant of theta or tangent of theta. And if you check your trig identities, you should see that the right choice is to let x equal tangent of theta with a 3 because of that x squared plus 9 so that when we make the substitution everything will simplify correctly. Once we pick that dx follows as the derivative 3 secant squared times d theta and then the square root we know is going to simplify to 3 secant theta. If you need to verify that using the Pythagorean identity, feel free to do so, but having done it in general, we don't need to do it every single time, just to save some time and some effort. So now when we substitute, let's see what happens. x cubed gets replaced with 3 tangent theta cubed, so the 3 cubed becomes 27, and then we have tangent cubed of theta. The square root of x squared plus 9 gets replaced with 3 secant theta. And then dx gets replaced with 3 secant squared theta d theta. So notice that the 3's cancel and one of the secants cancels. So we're left with 27 tangent cubed theta secant theta d theta. Now again, for this, we need to think back to the last unit on integration with u substitution using trig identities to simplify things of the form tangent to a power times secant to a power. And if you remember at that point, we looked for either an even power on secant, which we don't have here, or an odd power on tangent. And here we have an odd power on tangent, so we're good to go there. If we separate off secant and tangent to be our du, then we can use u substitution here. So just pause for a moment and notice what we're doing. We're taking an integral in terms of x, we're making a substitution using theta, a trig substitution, and then we're doing a second substitution using u. So we're packaging a lot of pieces together here, which is part of the reason that this method is one of the hardest ones, because we have to do several problems together all at once. We have to do a trig substitution problem and then to solve that we have to do a u substitution and once we integrate we're going to come back from u to theta and then we'll have to do another substitution to come back from theta to x. So there's several layers to this and it's easy to get lost in the details. So make sure after you go through this whole problem that you can look at your work and you can find how you went from the beginning to the end and make sure you can follow that line of reasoning and you could repeat it on your own. So again for this one we're going to separate off a secant tangent so we'll rewrite this as 27 times tangent squared times secant tangent so the secant tangent is going to be our du which means our u should be secant theta. Because the derivative of secant is secant tangent. And that means this will get replaced with du and this part needs to be rewritten in terms of secant. So we'll rewrite this as 27 times secant squared theta minus 1 and then we can make our substitution in terms of u. So we have the integral of 27 u squared minus 1 du and of course that's just 27 u squared minus 27 so when we integrate we get 27 over 3 or 9 u to the third minus 27 u 
and then we can replace u having now finished the integral we can replace u with secant theta again and we're almost done one more step we need to come back to x because the question was in terms of x theta and u were both dummy variables that we created simply to integrate and now that we're done we need to make sure our answer is back in terms of x now notice all we have in the answer is secant theta so we just need to come back to where we have a connection between secant theta and x and notice right here 3 secant theta equals the square root of x squared plus 9 so the secant of theta equals the square root of x squared plus 9 divided by 3 so everywhere we have secant of theta in our answer we can replace it with this square root divided by 3 so we can rewrite this as 9 times the square root of x squared plus 9 over 3 cubed minus 27 and then the same thing. So the answer looks pretty complicated, but we can stop there and leave it as is. If you would like to simplify, it turns out it simplifies a little bit to simply the one third times the square root of x squared plus nine cubed minus nine times the square root of x squared plus nine. So that's a little bit cleaner looking, but the line second from the bottom is perfectly fine, even though it looks pretty complicated. So this one, again, if you know how to do trig integrals using powers of secant and tangent and using the right u substitution, this one wasn't too bad. There weren't any weird identities you needed to use in the simplification process, and replacing things back in terms of x was relatively straightforward. We just needed one substitution, recognizing that secant of theta equals the square root of x squared plus 9 divided by 3. So again, you should go back through this one and make sure you recognize the overall structure of the problem, that you can see how we started by recognizing it was a trig subproblem and recognizing which substitution to use that would make this square root simplify most effectively. And once we pick that, these next two pieces follow naturally from that. And then after we make our substitution, we enter this other problem where now we have to integrate this function involving powers of secant and tangent and that took a little bit of work with a u substitution and once we got the answer to that we had to convert back in terms of theta and then finally back into terms of x. There's a lot going on here and it's easy to get lost in the details but make sure you understand that overall structure of the problem and how we are moving from one part to the next.